what's up guys i'm today with big Papa Rock, and we're gonna talk about five issues that we have with pvp in raid or what kind of things that we could do better and maybe we could get the pvp going on again i feel like it used to be a bigger part of the game and many people are kind of taking a step back on it and playing it more casually and maybe not as focused on it as they used to be but what's up <laughs> what's up drug yeah what up dude it's good to see you shitty i'm i'm stoked to to be on your channel and uh i feel like this is the collab that everyone has wanted for a long time and now we're finally making it happen man so thank you so much for having me on yeah actually i have gotten many many comments about it many times uh i'm thinking have i i don't know if i probably i have never asked anybody for collab before you might actually be the first guy that i dm about it but there has been many comments about it before Oh, wow. Well, now, now I'm honored because, you know, it's funny, like I, I figured we would do a collab at some point, especially because both of our channels are so uh, PVP focused. So I'm glad that we we finally made it happen. And thanks for reaching out. And I feel like we talked about it in the past. Like, oh, yeah, we should do something. Uh, what should we talk about? So it's nice that you put it together. And now we get to talk about our favorite topic, a.k.a. PVP and raid. And how do we make it better? <laughs> yeah, I kind of told you like off the record before the video, but I'm pretty shy. I've been nervous in the couple call-ups that I did, so I was kind of taking my time on those, but I was also planning that we will definitely eventually de do some call-ups, and that's why I wasn't like I wasn't in a rush to do it, because I, I was sure it was going to happen at some point. But so I basically got five talking points that are my main things that I would like to see, and I can like explain what I think about them, and maybe you have some ideas what you would do differently. And then maybe after my, let's say, top five list, what other things did I left out that you would think are big issues? Or maybe you disagree with me on one of these. Maybe it isn't an issue at all. But on the yeah. fir first one on the list, we are 100% going to agree because we have talked about this many times in the content creator chat. But the topic is going to be blind arena. And oh, yeah. I mean, this is kind of weird uh like um coincidence or time to do this after i have left mad but obviously everybody knows that in classic arena this doesn't really matter at all in live arena but in classic arena everybody is using clan tax this has been thing since the beginning of platinum arena which i think was added maybe like one year into the game it wasn't quite at the start but people are using clan tax and they aren't hitting their clan mates. Many people feel like it's an issue that makes the game feel unfair or impossible to compete if you're not in one of the top clans. And I kind of do agree it would be more fair if it didn't exist. But I also think you could leave out multiple other things than just the clan name. I feel like if you didn't see the player name, you only saw the team and you also didn't see the bills so you would only see the champions not the blessings and not the empowerment that would leave a lot of room for people to come up with defense teams that aren't in the exact way that people usually use what is considered meta and maybe some off meta strategies can catch people off guard like let's say for instance that you have a team that looks like a like a very slow tanky team something like with Taras and Maritzka and maybe Sifi. And maybe instead of running a very tanky Sifi like people usually do, you might have incredibly fast Sifi and Taras or anything like that. But I feel like they could just leave everything out. Clan name, player name, player power. You should also leave like um, all of the identifiers about the account. So you can show the trophies that they have because you would obviously know or the trophies that the clan has. But if you left all of that out, I feel like the classic arena meta would be a little bit more interesting and maybe a little bit more complicated as well. Yeah, it's, it's you know, this is definitely top of my list also. Um, it's gotten to the point for me personally that I don't even play classic arena anymore. I will literally not play it because I think it is completely pointless. Um, and it's like an all clan kind of problem. Like, Panda targets Mad, Mad targets Panda, you know, everybody targets the, the other clan people. And it just, it puts you in a position where 
to me, Classic Arena is supposed to be about who is the best player, individual player that week. And you can't you can't figure that out anymore because the strength of clans is so important in this mode and the targeting people. And like the best example I look at is you look at it, Panda, right? The guy who had the most trophies until rats overtook him. Well, Panda hasn't won a trophy in over a year because it's literally impossible for him to do so. He gets absolutely blitzed down in the last five minutes because everybody targets his account and annihilates him. And, you know, I'm sure that has to be immensely frustrating for him. But for me, it's also frustrating because I want to see who has the best strategy, who has the best account, who is the best that week as an individual player. So I completely agree with you. I would love to see anything identifying in terms of, yeah, trophies, clan name, uh, player name. That should all disappear. And I know other games do it. Like I've heard, I think Watcher of Realms does that or 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 something else does. So to me, there's no reason why not to do that to make, you know, arena, classic arena more enjoyable again. I will say the one place where I maybe I differ with you is I do want to see the blessings uh, because I hate Polymorph so much. <laughs> I want to know if I'm going into a team that has, you know, four champions with six star Polymorph, but I wouldn't necessarily be against removing that as well. And I think you do make a valid point that it could make for some interesting trap strategies and like what am i facing i don't know but that might be the one part where i'm like eh, leave it the same but the other stuff for the love of god plarium please i'm begging you give us blind arena and on top of that i'm going to piggyback one more thing off of this shitty give us blind arena and don't make it reset at 4 a.m my time in america okay it's driving me crazy man like i am not staying up till 4 a.m or waking up at 3 a.m or 3 30 to play raid shadow legends like they have got to find a better time to reset or ideally change the reset time every like month or so so that people who are in the east coast of north america actually have a chance to play this game mode so that i'm putting that in there because it drives me crazy and i would like to be able to play it again but until they make these changes like nope no way not doing it <laughs> yeah that might actually be the most common question that I have gotten from people. Many, many times people ask me to ask in the content creator chat, why can't we get Classic Arena reset on different times? And we have actually asked this multiple times and Barium has given specific answer and it's the same one that they give every time for many years. They have said that they want it to be at a time where they can monitor the Platinum Arena. So it can be on weekends and it basically has to be on the day or evening time of you and i don't know how much they actually monitor because you you might not even recall this if you're not pushing that often but there has often been times where platinum arena has been bugged out for instance nobody gets a trophy after reset and then they have to manually fix it afterwards and then ha then there has been times where the platinum like lasts for like 10 minutes or five minutes after the reset there's all kinds of small issues sometimes. I don't think as much recently, but there has been times when these issues were very common. So it's possible that they do actually monitor it, but there has been some bugs related to it, so I understand. But I would... Yeah. Yeah? I just don't think that's a good enough excuse. Like, yeah. okay, you can't... Like, come on, you can't monitor it another time? Like, come on. Yeah, it, come it, on. I don't buy it, Plarium. I don't buy it. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels kind of like an excuse. And if that truly is the reason, I mean, to be honest, I mean, Plarium is a big company. Could they just hire a guy that has the time to monitor Platinum Arena during weekends or whatever time that maybe they shift it? But I feel like weekend would be better than Monday because obviously yes. some people, of course, are going to be working on weekends, but definitely more people on average could even make the 4 a.m. time on, let's say, Saturday. It still wouldn't be ideal, but if you had weekends and maybe rotating times, it would be a lot better. But one thing that I would add to the previous issue about the hidden blessings and polymorph, I feel like you might not, you want to see if they have polymorph, but if you're not able to see blessings, I think people would actually use less polymorph because of that. And they would kind mm. of assume that other people think that you're using Polymorph and they're using teams that don't use a lot of debuffs anyway because of that. And they would be using maybe Bone Armor sometimes instead of it or maybe 
temporal chains if they have a surprise speed team. So I think you would overall see less polymorph if the blessings were hidden. Yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting thought. I, I, I don't know either way. You know what I mean? I don't know because they refuse to give us a blind arena. So I have no clue. But that's an interesting thing to think about because it is such a prevalent blessing, especially in like live arena. But yeah, it's it's I don't know. It's a fascinating. It's a fascinating idea. I really wish this was like one million percent my number one thing too. If they well. Maybe not my number number one. I think we can guess what that is, but definitely uh, extremely important to me in the same way because I do think it would reinvigorate Arena. And I agree. Like I feel like Arena and Raid, people aren't as passionate about it as they once were because of the fact that we've seen realistically very little changes um, or improvements. You know, they introduced Live Arena last year and then they've done almost nothing to make it better, uh, which I'm like, ah, like this, this, this has the potential, man. I think you feel the same way, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, Live Arena was going to be the next talking point anyway. But yeah, I have spoken about it before that there's so much room for like um, different kind of player events and maybe even like if we want to put it from Plarium's perspective that would be more attractive to them, I feel like there would be more advertising opportunities with Live Arena that are kind of untapped, but... For instance, we have the... I guess I can't show it right now. I don't think... Yeah, we don't have Live Arena up right now. But uh, you have the rule set on bottom right corner of the screen when a Live Arena battle or when you're in the lobby to start a battle. And people kind of expected at the start of the release that we would get different rule sets or tournaments or something like that. And maybe they are planning to do it, but they haven't given any hints and we don't know if that's happening but i think um, a lot of people kind of played it at the start especially to get the rewards and it's getting less and less active if there was different tournaments and maybe at one time you can only use specific factions or let's say you can't use stone skin you can't use polymorph maybe those were th those would be maybe too restrictive because you need gems to change it but maybe there was epic only tournament or like season, those could be fun. Maybe they would add rewards to different seasons and much more people would play Live Arena. And then one other version that they could do about that is that some other games, my go-to example is the recently released game AFK Journey. They basically have Live Arena like we do in Raid, but it's a tournament where you do nine battles or you know you do nine battles if you win, but if you lose three battles, then it's over. But you don't actually use your own champions. You get to choose from one of four randomly generated teams. And mm. then, then after every battle, you get tokens. And you can buy champions and items with those tokens. And you get to kind of team, bu team build your roster with typical RPG mechanics. And you have like an artifact. Like at the start, you get a team with three champions and one artifact. And these have very specific special effects that they might increase one champion's damage on a specific skill on certain conditions, or you might do 10% of your team's maximum attack every 10 seconds as true damage. Dif different kind of effects, but you get a lot of strategy and nuance with these. And obviously it has very low bar to participate, so any new player can join these tournaments and kind of get into PvP, learn about PvP and the top champions in the game. And also, I feel like there's a lot of room for Plarium to do advertising and host some events and tournaments for players. They could have players from other games even participate in these tournaments. Like, they could invite a Hearthstone player with another Hearthstone player, and they do, like, some advertising tournament against each other or battle. They could do that kind of stuff. They could host player tournaments, maybe the winner gets gems or they get a title or avatar or whatever, but there's so much untapped potential to do all kinds of events with Live Arena. Oh, absolutely. I, I think it's the, like, when I look at the game as a whole, and obviously I think you and I are both people that really enjoy PvP, um, and I know there are a lot of people that play Raid that don't, uh, for a lot of different various reasons, I think number number one being you gotta you kind of gotta spend a little bit of money to be uh, competitive at the high level. You know what I mean? Mm. Maybe not as much money as I have spent, but uh, that's because you're probably smarter than me, uh, viewer. But the point is, is that you know it, it, PvP I think has 
the most untapped potential in this game for sure. And specifically live arena. And I agree, like I would love to see different modes. I would love to see Epic only live arena one weekend, or, you know, like you said, like uh, tournaments where the champions are given to you. Like they wouldn't be able to do this all the time because realistically that would discourage people from buying shards and it's a business. And obviously they want people to buy shards to have champions, to have a better chance um, in live arena. Um, But I just feel like there's so much they could do in this game mode that would be absolutely transformative and so much fun. And I look at other games and I think about like the success of other kind of gotcha games or mobile RPGs, whatever. And and a lot of them, like the PVP is the draw. You know, that's the main reason why you play the game. That's the thing that gets people in. That's the stuff that keeps them invested. Um, It's very clear. Like I watched a recent Hell Hades video, like Raid is definitely not dying. Uh, certainly not from a profit <laughs> perspective and uh, which really surprised me because I was like, oh, it has to be going. It has to be going down because, you know, so many high end PVP players are leaving. But realistically, it's not. So I don't know. I think this would be something that if they if they did this kind of stuff, if they put some more variety into live arena, people would be more excited. And I'm going to add one thing here, too. And and that is I, and it's something I've seen at the low end. Right. Because now I have a free to play account that I've been putting a lot of time into in addition to my main account. But holy smokes, they have got to make matchmaking better. Like they have got to improve the matchmaking algorithm in Live Arena to get people invested because you should not be playing like a level 100 account as a level 65 account. That should just not happen. I don't care if it takes longer for a match to be made. There is no reason for that level of disparity to exist. So to me, that's the other thing they've really got to address with Live Arena, you know, in terms of like fixing stuff is, if you are a lower level account, you should be playing someone within like five to 10 levels of your account. And if you, you know what, if you can't find someone, then, then give me a bot because I would realistically rather have a chance against someone that's, you know, a bot than get blown out of the water in two seconds against an account that I'm never going to be able to compete with from a level perspective. Like once you hit level hundred, fine, whatever, everything goes, you know, obviously there are some counts that will be stronger. That's just the way it is, but I'd love to see them really improve their matchmaking algorithm. And I think that would make a massive impact um, in terms of people wanting to actually play the game mode again and enjoying the game mode. Yeah, I think, uh, I'm sorry for not remembering, remembering his name, but there used to be a content creator in Raid. I don't think he has made content in quite a while. I think he was in Scene Cluster, but I can't, mm-hmm remember his name but he i think he worked in like finance industry or something like that and he he was always making videos about like um in regards to plarium's finance and like their reports and this kind of stuff and he was always saying that people seem to think that plarium is making money out of wells but it's actually mm. a very small portion of their like profits and most of it comes from the like people that like they have so many different people that play the game and they maybe they just buy one back or just a little bit but there's so big volume of people that do that that that's the main source of income and it's actually not the whales i don't know have you heard about this before so i've heard people say this and i and i guess like the thing that i would question is you know obviously it's really tough for us to tell we're not plarium employees we don't have access to the analytics but I don't know. I think about how life generally works where like, you know, in most industries, it's, you know, 20% of the people make 80% of the money is the general kind of like idea of how most jobs work where your top echelon are the people that are generating the majority of the money. And I would imagine that something like that would apply to a game like this, because I look at how much people spend at the high end and in, in, on this game. And you're absolutely right. There are a lot of people that play raid maybe they buy a pack here or there. And maybe that's like a hundred bucks a month. Right. But then one whale could spend potentially a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars in a month on this game, which is the equivalent of up to a thousand plus players. You know what I mean? So I wonder, I do wonder like what the actual data says. Like I I just I know too many people. I like obviously I've spent enough money in this game, but I know too many people who have spent astronomical sums of money like absolutely crazy uh, and there are a lot more people that have done that than i think maybe people realize um so i wonder i wonder and i'm sure they have categories where maybe like yeah maybe there's not as many ultra god tier spenders who've dropped a million on this game or more but i know they exist 
Um, so maybe it's like a wider range of like the person who spends a thousand dollars a month. I would still consider that person to be a pretty big spender when you consider it's a mobile game. You know what I mean? So I guess that would be the other thing is what, how do you rank these people? Where do you put them? Like is a small spender 50 bucks a month or are they, you know, are they a hundred or are they 200? Like what does that kind of look like for Polarium? But yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting thing. I wish I had the data to see. I'd be really curious. Yeah. I'm no expert. I haven't looked into it, but I do remember that some of the statistics, I guess, were public. And there used to be that mm. one guy that was doing videos about this. I can't recall his name, but I'm sure I can add it to the video when I ask afterwards. But he was like, do you remember this guy? He's like a very checked, checked up guy from Sin Cluster. <laughs> I just can't remember his <laughs> name. I don't. You know, the people I think about when I think about PvP stuff too is, or mm -hmm. is like the names that always come to mind were the people I watched when I was really getting into raid, which was, uh, it was Boomer, it was Machan. Like, you know what I mean? Those were my boys. I loved watching their content. And like when I think about like that kind of stuff, those are the, the two names that pop out immediately to, uh, to me. And of course, both of have since left, uh, have left raid, sadly. Both, uh, Former clan mates of yours, actually, in, in, the, in the Mad Clan, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah, and actually, Evan, w another clan mate that used to be the like the biggest PvP content creator, but he quit Evan before those, used to be Manipal. I don't know if you remember or know him. but Yeah, that was a little before my time for Ray, but I do know of him, yeah. But, but this guy used to make videos at the same time as Manipal, so that might be why you, don't, mm. you haven't heard about him. But... Uh, do you have anything else to say in regards to that topic? No, I think I think that covers it. I think we both want the same thing here. Just more variety. You know what I mean? Like, it, again, I, I I just feel like this offers the most potential for Raid going forward to really reinvigorate a large portion of the, of the player base. Maybe it's not for everyone, but I think if they make some of these changes, maybe it would be more accessible for more people and you'd see more people want to play it. Yeah, and actually, that's kind of a good segue to the next topic and... This kind of ties them together. But I would say kind of in relation to, to what you were talking about before. But obviously Raid is doing something right and it's not actually dying. And I have tried many of these newly launched other gacha games. And I would say in my personal experience, the one thing that definitely sets Raid apart from these is the combat, combat and like by proxy PvP because the combat is obviously way better in Raid, and that also gives the PvP much more potential, because the Raid combat is actually pretty complex. That's definitely one of the reasons why it's so hard to balance the game, which is going to be the next topic. But the combat is so complex that there's definitely a lot of room and fun to like make PvP teams and come up with different niche tactics and so on. But I feel like these kind of things used to happen more in the early days of Raid. And now we have kind of gotten maybe too big power creep or some specific champions that, that are so much stronger that we don't actually come up with any new strategies anymore because there's just no point in, into doing it. Like I remember back in the day, every now and then people would come up with all sorts of weird strategies. Do you remember a Night Revenant champion called Kaitis? Yes, I do. I know exactly the strategy you're talking about, too. Yeah, so at one point, he was basically the highest damage champion in the game. And people did actually use him. Like, he was used in Platinum Arena. I was kind of actually talking about this same topic a little bit before with Noob. But there used to be many epics that were actually very relevant at different times in... Uh, like, even in the... Vogoth, yeah, Vogoth, for example. Remember Vogoth, that meta? That was fun. Yeah, Wogot. I used a lot Wogot. I would I would dare to say that I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that there's nobody else in the game that has used Wogot more in Platinum Arena than me <laughs> because I was using him for a very long time. But there was also a bunch of others like Rector was used. People have even yeah. used Doom Priest. There was Sky Dutch Shaman that used to be used as a cleanser. Seeker used to be very meta in defense teams because yeah. you, you have the passive that gives you a buff. There was multiple other champions. I kind of just recently talked about it. Sand's Last Survivor. I remember Mac Chan, I think, got one. He, he made a video about it, at least. I don't want to say he won a rank one trophy with that. He might have done it, but he definitely made a video about it at one point where Sand Last Survivor was used in 
defense, I think, in some resistant resistance teams, and she kind of has a passive that she puts ally protection on everybody and block damage on her, and then you build her very slow and so on. Yeah. And of course, Madame Ceres used to be used in every single offense uh, team. Magnar I miss her. Mag I miss her so much. I love Madame Ceres. That was my girl. Yeah. Magnar was the second best nuker at one point, when Tranda was the best one. But we used to have lots of these things. I don't see any of that happening ever again, and it hasn't happened for a while. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you're so right on this too. Like, I miss... I think that was like when I look at, at raids PvP, that was to me the golden age in terms of just variety, oh. quality. Like, uh, by the way, it's different. Uh, of course, I forgot Gala. <laughs> I need. To oh yeah, of course. How, how could you feel like that? You're, yeah. you're the Gala. You're the Gala man. You know what I mean? That's your. That's your girl. But yeah, it's 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 the power creep has been insane. And like, I look. I played raid for three years now. I just had my three year anniversary literally like a week or two ago. And I look at the immense power of creep in the last power creep in the last year and a half because it's been like there's always power creep in games like this because there has to be in order to to justify people buying champions or buying shards or whatever else. And again, that's the business aspect of it. But oh my god, the power creep in the last year and a half has just been insane, like insane power creep with the introduction of blessings, the power of stuff like polymorph. Then you have, obviously, I think some of our most hated champions, uh, Ataris Marichka. Uh, I know you are not a huge fan of them. Guess what? I'm not either, and I have both. I, I wanted them nerfed. I've wanted them nerfed the entire time. Um, you know what I mean? And now we've got Armands, and <laughs> we've got mythical champions, and it's just like the power creep is insane, and I do, I do wish that we had more variety in the kind of champions you use, but I think that's the tough thing is that the higher up you go in the game, the more likely people are to have these champions, the more they have insane gear. And if you don't use them, if you try to pull out an epic champion, right? Like what you do is you guarantee somebody gets another god tier, insane, mythical, or or legendary. And that's so tough to counteract. Like I will say that I think Plarium has made a really great decision allowing epic empowerment. I'm really happy about that. That's something that I always wanted as well, even though I don't think that it will suddenly make epics relevant in the high end. It will certainly help the lower end of arena and make that more enjoyable. And again, hopefully bring more people into the fold so that arena matters more so that more of these changes uh, matter to Plarium, right? You know, in terms of analytics of who are playing these game modes, but yeah, it's like the champion rebalance stuff. It's, I think it's one of the biggest areas where Plarium has kind of not done what I would hope. You know, mm. yeah, it, it's tough. Yeah, I uh, we talked about this with noobs, and I was also saying the same thing that for me personally, the number one thing that I would want them to focus in the game would be champion balance, and that they would do it very often, like every month, multiple, uh, like yeah. buffs and nerfs, and they could even be like topical ones that everybody is using. Like, let's say thirty out of thirty teams are using Marit Skataras and UDK. Maybe you should nerf all of them instantly. Like they could totally. You should nerf all of them. That's the thing that drives me crazy, and that's and I get it because like people get upset because they're like, "Oh, we've spent money for these champions." Look, dude, I spent a bunch of money on these champions too. But you know what matters more? Game balance. Okay, like game balance matters more, and it's it. I don't understand why Plarium went away from a model of, you know, like we introduced a champion that was too strong, we made a mistake. We know we need to balance them, a.k.a. Sifi, Rodos, champions that were insanely broken, and they came in and fixed them. And, and this is the thing I think that people don't understand. They're still really good. Yeah, You can yeah. balance champions and have them still be really good. Like Taurus and Marichka would still be extremely strong, even if they were slightly tweaked. Like, I don't want to see these champions nerfed into the ground, so they're terrible. I'm not advocating that. But I do want to see balance, like because it makes for more interesting gameplay. And that's even having spent asinine amounts of money trying to get some of these champions like i have one taurus i have a plus three marichka i've gotten a lot of marichka copies obviously but i would much rather see them not be overpowered and i don't like this idea of the only way to counter a champion that we introduce cough our mom's cough is by suddenly introducing another champion that hard counters this one specific champion like no just make them balance from the very beginning and then 
You know what I mean? If you want to introduce another champion that counters them, great, but don't make them so overpowered that they completely disrupt the way the game is played. Yeah, I think the issue is that I have also talked about this before, both on videos and I have tried to debate with the community managers about it, but of course they are not even the ones that decide it and so on. But yeah. they have this big no-no nerf, no-no word with the word nerf. They don't actually want to nerf anything and they just want to bu <laughs> buff things and add new more OP champions that counter the old ones. And they should just nerf punch of champions. Like, like I said, yeah. if there's one champion that is in every single top arena team, nerf it instantly. And you don't have to nerf like every skill. Maybe you, maybe you do a small nerf and then you look how the meta changes. Does it make yeah. any difference at all? Maybe you nerf it a little bit more. I'm not saying to make champions unviable, but also I think that it would almost incentivize people to spend more because back in the day, the meta used to change every couple of weeks. Like we had mm. an update where Cupidus got buffed. Suddenly all of the defense teams changed and everybody was using Cupidus offense and even Cupidus defense. Then a little bit after we get Bolster or we get Baron buff, and always people have to shuffle up with their teams and they have to build new ones. Nowadays, we had the Taras Mariska UDK Sifi meta for like a year, a little bit more than a yeah. year, and yeah, not, year. nothing else at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you couldn't, and it was so hard to compete. And this is where you and I differ because, you know, we know how I feel about Polymorph, but you couldn't, you couldn't block their passives, which were what made them so insanely broken was the fact that it was their absurd passives. And obviously just Taurus in general does such nutty damage. And I think the other thing too, and this is what also drives me crazy on the topic of champion balancing is, all right, you have a game, right? Raid, I've talked about this in previous videos, but Raid Shadow Legends is very much a game where it's like rock, paper, scissors. This beats this, this beats that, that beats that, whatever. That's how BVP works. Like something beats something else, but is weak. It's like Pokemon, right? But one of the way, things that I think that's good. I like when it's like that. Yeah, I, that is good. That is great. I love that. What I hate and what I think is absurd is that certain champions, certain champions don't, they're mm -hmm. completely different from other champions. And a great example is Taurus. Every other HP champion in the game, if they lose HP, their, their effectiveness goes down, their damage goes down, they are no longer strong. But Taurus, for some reason, who knows what reason he is special. He is different. He is the one HP based champion that doesn't work like every other HP based champion. That is ridiculous. That is absurd. Another great example, uh, you know, would be champions like Armand's and Sung Wukong in terms of their ability to. And here I'll give you an example. Like stone skin is a joke to them. They don't care about stone skin. Their ability will take away stone skin. It will deep through stone skin it can't be blocked it can be resisted but it can't be blocked right and that's important can't be blocked so then why does quintus whose skill literally says mm. can't be blocked when it comes to removing buffs his skill is blocked his skill doesn't work because he's not placing his sheep debuff that kind of inconsistency is extremely frustrating from a from a like competitive arena perspective or from an arena enjoyer's perspective because to me, great gameplay is based upon great balance. And that is like just two small examples where balance is completely non-existent, where like one champion is just special. Well, that's ridiculous. Okay. Like the no, like no. Every champion should funk like they may have great skills, they may have interesting abilities, but from a coding perspective, the things they do should function the same as other things in the game itself. And I think that's one of the areas where it just for certain champions, it doesn't. I'm sure there are other examples that I'm forgetting, but oh my God, it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy, shitty. Mm. And the thing is that I feel like the combat style and the mechanics are very good in raid and they are like very complicated as well. So I understand that it makes the balancing a little bit hard, but because of that exactly, they should focus on that aspect of the game because the combat is what Raid has going for itself. I would also say that, like, I know that uh, you hate Polymorph and so on. I, oh, yeah. I kind of give them a little bit pass on Armands and Wukong because I kind of understand what they're trying to do there. Stone Skin is very strong, maybe a mm -hmm. little bit too strong, and they are trying to put out new ways to counter it, but maybe those champions, especially 
Armands. Maybe his polymorph is way too good. But uh, one other champion... His polymorph is nuts. His polymorph is crazy. Just with the skill cooldown stuff, too. It's just like, what? Like, holy smokes. Yeah, and if he just did the polymorph, that would be one thing. But he also does a bunch of other things, which work very well together. Like, you buff strip them, and you stun them, or you steal turn meter and so on. They all work super well together. I would mm-hmm. say that one thing, like, there's this... Um, do you have a Gitsmark, one of the new Primal champions? I don't have him, but I'm I'm intimately familiar with him and his HP burn mechanic and, and what he does. So, so I feel like he's the newest way that they tried to implement a stone skin counter. And I feel, I mean, he's a very good champion. I definitely have trouble against him in live arena. I don't know mm-hmm. if you do, but I feel like he was maybe a little bit better way to try to counter a stone skin. What, what do you think about it? Well, I think, you know, the problem in live arena is he just becomes a sheep. Like, you know, this comes back to the polymorph debate. And obviously this would have been one of the things I would talk about later. So I won't belabor the point too long, but it's part of why I think polymorph is still too strong because champions like Gizmac that are meant to counter stone skin um, suddenly can't. And it's, and it's, this is the thing that drives me crazy about Ray PVP too, um, which is just like, I hate the RNG aspect. I hate how RNG a lot of the counters have become in recent years. Like that level of RNG was never present in the game two years ago. Like when I look at like, quote unquote, the golden age of PVP, you did not have this much RNG. You you had some level of RNG for sure. Um, But I think, and there's like, there's two big reasons why. I think Polymorph is probably the number one reason for sure. I'm not saying take it out of the game. I understand what it's there to do. You know what I mean? Try to counter the speed meta, but then you introduce a champion like Armand's, which makes the speed meta even more important. Um, and again, a, a champion that can get through stone skin, basically guaranteed, make your champion a sheep, everything else. Like that level of RNG and that level of strength to me is frustrating. Like I would love to see Gizmac be a, a consistent counter to stone skin where it's like, okay, I know this guy's coming in with stone skin. I know his team's stone skin is super strong. Well, now I'm going to bring in Gizmac and I have a, I have a really good counter to this but at the high level because almost every champion is six star polymorph you're just asking to become a sheep and i think that's frustrating from a gameplay perspective because of how strong that blessing is i think if they just balanced it to be less prevalent and to be a lot less strong um and this is also what makes armands crazy and i i I don't want to go to armands because i don't want your video to get super disliked like my last video (laughs) did on armands Mm. but part of what makes him so crazy is he has an ability. He's not meant to be a damage dealer, right? But he, his A3, his sheep ability, is essentially a damage by itself. It's a stone skin remover, uh, guaranteed if you have enough accuracy. Um, and on top of that, it's a half health remover, which is crazy against some champions that are really tanky. Because, like, in what world should he be able to remove half of a champion's health, remove the thing protecting them in stone skin? shut their skills down, then take more turns. That's why I think he is unbalanced and broken in his current form. Though I'm sure, you know what I mean, he can be fun to play with when you're the guy using him and completely annihilating a team. But yeah, it's it's like, it's part of why Polymorph still drives me so crazy because I think it's too strong that makes champions like Gizmac way less useful than they should be otherwise. Uh, and that's a bummer because he is a super cool champion. Yeah, I would also say, like, speaking of inconsistent mechanics, like you were talking about, with Tara scaling from his original HP and not current HP or max HP, but um, Armand is so strong that he's on par with lockout champions, maybe even better than some of them, because yeah. he's one of the best ones in the game. I would say lockout is one of those things that should have been nerfed in raid five years ago, it's super yeah. inconsistent. It goes through stone skin. You can't pro- block. Uh, you can't proc polymorph against it. It has no like weaknesses, no downsides, and there's basically nothing that you can do against it other than like surviving for many turns and maybe being super fast that you can get your cooldowns back. But I feel like that should have been addressed long time ago. And if they just addressed all of these major issues instantly, then the PvP landscape could be totally different. Oh, for sure. I actually don't disagree with this. I do think Lockout has been really, really strong for a long time. I think Armand's is a different level, though, when I look at like Lockout in the past, because 
Armand's essentially guarantees your team isn't able to do anything. Like your team just can't act, can't take turns, can't do a single thing. Whereas lockout, you still have hypothetical ability to use A1 abilities um, to actually do something. And for some champions like Rodos, that can be enough to get around it if you mm-hmm. proc extra turns, which is part of why I think Armand's is overpowered um, relative to other lockout champions. But I think the biggest mistake they've made from a PvP perspective, when it comes to stuff like Lockout is, there's supposed to be a reliable counter for this stuff, right? There's supposed to be something that actually does work that makes it so that your champion doesn't lose their skills or whatever else. And that is resistance. Like, resistance is supposed to be the counter for this kind of stuff. It's also supposed to be the counter for debuffs, right? But it's essentially completely useless in the high level. And it has been... Not super useful for a long time unless you could build insanely high level resistance teams, which like on my account, I could, you know, before even all the six star or whatever stuff, I could hit 900 plus resistance on a Kaimar, um, which is insane. But only a few people can do that. But the problem I look at is, and I think what's exacerbated a lot of the issues with PvP and raid is resistance isn't a viable counter at the higher level. It can sometimes work, certainly at very low level gameplay or even mid level. But the higher up in the game you go, the less it matters because the accuracy system accuracy system is so slanted towards accuracy, which was already bad enough as it is. But the real death knell, the real nail in the coffin for this kind of counter is mythical champions ignores like they ignore yeah. resistance. Like what the what? Why in the world was that necessary? You you essentially killed that as as a potential counter. You have taken that out of the game. Because there is no, there's literally no way with a well built Crixia to resist. There is none. There is no way. You cannot do it. It is impossible unless you get lucky and get a 3% thing. And again, here's that RNG type stuff coming back. Well, that's crazy. Like you should be able to build resistance so that if you have higher resistance than accuracy, guess what? That ability fails. And that's how the vast majority of games in this space and in other spaces work where it's like, it's a hard check, but not in raid. Yeah. And that's a shame. And there's massive downsides into building resistance. Anyway, you need to mm-hmm. sacrifice all of the other stats. We actually made a video with final Ken Bachi in regards to resistance, maybe two months ago, but we, we went into this, like in very detail that it is at a ma- massive disadvantage and so on. And Huge. I feel, I feel like they kind of like, uh, it was meant to be the way to counter accuracy or keep it in check, but then they kind of abandoned it like halfway into the raid or even in the beginning. And they yeah. kind of tried to implement other mechanics that kind of bypass the resistance a little bit or accuracy that maybe you have stone skin and you have 50% chance to resist and some other like RNG mechanics, but they are not like guaranteed and it's not really like a counter. It's more like a Sometimes it's, it's, it's a dice roll. You know what I mean? Like that's where it gets frustrating because you build a champion. You could build an incredible champion with like, I have the right gear. My champion is stronger. My champion is better. My champion should win. But guess what? Too bad. Roll the dice. Your champion loses like that. That is not satisfying PVP. That's one of the biggest things I would like to see changed in this kind of stuff so that there is satisfying PVP so that again, there is more variety in builds. And you're absolutely right. When you build high resistance, you are sacrificing so much in other areas, but you're doing it because you need a champion to specifically counter certain things. Well, now, forget it. It's completely pointless. There's no reason to do it. Yeah, I don't know. C- can you see my screen right now? No, I can't. Oh, okay. But yeah. I can imagine it. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at Glisser. I don't know if you remember yeah. this forgotten champion because she hasn't kind of been used a lot. Even though, funnily enough, this is funny trivia, but Glissach has won the trophy one time in raid. And during that reset, I was ranked two. I missed rank one because of Glissach. So that's one oh, of my... Oh, really? That, that was the one. That, that was the one. Okay. Yeah, that, that's my like worst day in raid. Or not the worst day, but it's one of my most regretful days, let's say. But so Glissach has a passive that has 50% chance to resist lockout. That's not a counter. This is kind of like stone skin that they're implementing. Well, stone skin is just good for other reasons too, but yeah. they're, they're implementing things that are supposed to be counters or checks, but they are not really, they are not like good enough 
And even if we talk about masteries, I feel like there should be a mastery, for instance, that is a counter to lockout. Like maybe the ones that has 50% chance to remove debuffs if you take 20%, 25% of your max HP, maybe that mm -hmm. should apply to lockout as well. Or maybe there should be another mastery that applies to lockout. But so mechanics kind of go unchecked and lockout, I think, is the, is the original OP mechanic. But nowadays we got multiple newer stuff as well. Yeah, I, I would say like the sheep mechanic is stronger now at this point because of the fact that it can because you can have up to two turns, you know, where your champion is completely useless. And if you lose the wrong champion, like, for example, I know you don't have Harima, but if you had a Harima and your team is built around Harima and and, you know, ignore defense that that passive and you lose her. You know, now your team doesn't function. Now your team is dead. Right? And, and the thing that's like so crazy about that is how long that champion can be out because of how low that speed goes and how long that buff can potentially or that debuff can potentially last. But yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, I feel like if they made just a couple of these changes and also, like you said initially, if they just committed to balancing more champions, like they've done a better job this year than they did last year. Like, obviously, last year, they basically didn't balance a single thing for about eight months, which was just crazy because it's like there are 800 plus champions in this game and like 90% of them are in desperate need of some type of update, of some type of balancing, whether it's to be useful in PvE or to be useful in PvP. And so obviously this year they're doing a little bit more in that arena, but man, like I, I want to see five to ten top five to ten champions balanced every single month. I think that's a very reasonable thing to ask for. And I also think it helps them again to generate more income because people would be more inclined to pull shards for those champions. Now, if you have a 10x or a 15x for a champion like Astralon or whatever else, or someone that's not used, but now he's actually viable. Now people want to pull for him. So I don't know. Can't yeah. be balancing, improve it. <laughs> yeah. And to be fair, I guess they are trying to improve it a little bit. I don't know. Is it just because it was their original ban or because they got so much feedback about it? I have been trying to nag about it ever since I got the access <laughs> to the content creator chat, but they have said that their plan is to have multiple champions rebalanced every single major update this year. And I think they have been doing it so far. So I would say that the rebalances have been kind of unremarkable and no big hit so far. But even if they do small buffs, I'm still happy if they do anything about it, to be honest. But yeah. like, I, like I said, I, I know they don't want to do it. The reason, by the way, that they don't want to do it, and I mean, it's not the only reason, but they always cite that when they released Urogrim, who was like an epic champion that was very good at soloing Dragon and some other um, like uh, dungeon. Yeah, he, he was better than Bad Elkazar upon release. That was the craziest. I remember reading his kid and being like, oh my god, wow, he's better than a legendary. Like, not even debatable. Yeah, he was very good. He was very popular. He's still like, he's still way above average epic, if we're being honest. But he was so good that he was meta in like PvE. And when they nerfed it, it was the biggest backlash that they have ever gotten. And they always say that the community backlash w when they nerfed Urogrim was so big that they are afraid to do it again. And yeah. some of the more cynical viewers might say that this is just excuses. It might be, it might be a little bit of both, but that's basically the reason why they always say that they don't want to nerf things. But I think at some point, nerfs are more important than buffs. And... You, yes. don't, you don't have to buff like 900 champions out of 1,000. You just have to nerf five champions and the PvP is going to be way better. Yeah, I 100% I, I agree with that. And I'll tell you about the Urogrim stuff that was very clear. And I think that's like the, the part of talking about nerfs versus buffs. They have no issue nerfing rare champions or epic champions at all. Yeah, Hydra. So this, I, yeah, for Hydra. They, they, don't, they will nerf a rare or epic champion the second they feel like they have made them too powerful because they don't want people getting their hands on champions like that without spending a bunch of cash. Like, this is the reality. This is honesty. This is like, we're being completely honest here. And that is such a disappointing, that is just such a disappointing stance to me where it's like, look, if you release an OP champion and most OP champions are legendaries or mythicals, you have a duty to the health of your game and the quality of your community 
to balance them correctly. And if you realize after you release them that you have made them too strong, then in my opinion, you have an absolute just obligation to make them balanced within the larger within the larger realm of how a game functions. And again, every other game you see this consistently. I don't care if it's Call of Duty with weapons that are broken that need to be balanced or whether it's other RPGs. If something is too powerful, it is brought back in line with reality. And again, I understand this is a game where people spend money, but I truly believe as someone who has spent more money than the vast majority of the player base, that if champions were effectively balanced, including nerfs, people would be happier in the long term, specifically legendary champions that are broken, like Taurus, Marichka, Armands, or you know, even mythical champions that are pretty insane, like Galathir. Um, I don't know. Like maybe I'm crazy. Call me, you know, call me crazy, but I think that people would enjoy that overall, even if they have the champion. I know I would. And I have every one of those champions except for Galathir. And I would much rather see them not be OP insane to allow for more strategy. But will this ever happen? Nope. That, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a th tough primal to miss, though. If you have, you have all of the other primals except Galathir. I have, I have, uh, no, nah, I don't have nearly all the other ones. Like, there's uh. so many I don't have. But Galathir is definitely, I think, the most powerful, uh, mythical in my opinion his his kid is yeah his kid is really hard to deal with he's uh, i think this is also what makes armand so hard because armand's is so hard to counter and then if someone has armand's and galathir like, yeah. good luck you know what i mean like i don't know like who do you ban like it's really really tough in that in that yeah. instance you, um you you could even have armand's galathir and krix i have <laughs> yeah, made, yeah, made, that made, be, yeah that's insane I, <laughs> yeah I, you could i have made those couple times and i remember on one video i fought the same guy twice in a row and he was using both of those three all, all of those three and there's nothing that i can do about it he's faster yeah. than me he has three different champions that are locked me yeah. out and that's like goodbye but um anyway was that everything in regards to the champion balance or was there anything that you wanted to add i i think that covers it all you know what i mean i think we know what needs to be fixed i think they know what needs to be fixed and now it's just a question of do they do they actually want to change it or you know do they not and, and that always obviously comes down to to profit you know what i mean is there a reason to change it does it result in more profit you know those are the analytics we can't see i have always firmly been a believer that the more players you have that are happy the more money they spend the more money they want to spend um, but maybe I'm also naive and maybe that's not the case, but yeah, that, that covers pretty much, I think all of champion balancing. Yeah. By the way. Okay. That was my point that I forgot in regards to analytics. Like I would pay money for Plarium if I could go to lobby them about the champion rebalancing, but they don't even have to do that. I understand that they shouldn't really listen to the individual players opinions. Even if I feel like I'm hundred percent right about everything, but they mm -hmm. could just look at the analytics, see so if something has 100% usage rate in PvP, maybe it's too good, maybe they can, could do something about it, but they highly pride themselves in the fact that they look at the analytics and they take that kind of approach, which makes sense because it's a massive game and so on. There's a bunch of data and they could just easily look at the data and like make some like thresholds that if something has too big percentage of use or all of the top teams with that champion are that much better than everything else just nerf it like adjust yeah. the numbers and do it totally totally because i guarantee you if they had done that they would have seen taurus merchka and udk being way overpowered for the last year yeah um, because every every team or every player that had them was using them a hundred percent of the time like 99.9 like percent .9 of the time for sure yeah, and it's so frustrating. I mean, I have I have beaten that horse to the death. I have spoken about it so many times, but it's so frustrating <laughs> to see the e exact same defense team for a year in a row. Every team is using it. There's not really... I mean, you can beat that team, but it's very slow, and there's no reason because of that to use anything else. So You know you know what makes it easy? No polymorph. Just use that Ramon too. <laughs> well, I mean, you say that it would be easier for you, but I will still struggle with the speed thing. I wouldn't be faster, but that's just the me. Speed would be harder for sure. Yeah, I'm sure it would be better for most people, to be fair. But so, uh, okay, next topic. Maybe this is a little bit smaller one than the champion rebalance. Mm. That's definitely the biggest thing for me. But this may be... 
th these kind of all of course relate to each other but when we originally got the cvc everybody was expecting it to be cvc which means clan versus clan everybody assumed that it's going to be some kind of pvp competition between mm -hmm. different clans and we never got it i don't know if they are planning to do it they haven't given any hints but many players have been assuming that it's going to happen anytime soon for multiple years in a row i feel like that's a big missed opportunity in raid not just because i feel like the combat and pvp is the best part about the game but also because i feel like there isn't that much interaction with your clan and relevance to the clans in this game like for instance in some of the other games that were recently released you can direct message other people and you have a bunch of other things that are tied to the clan that make interacting with your clan mates more important i feel like if they added that and another point that they could also add is like friendly battles that you do with other people which could be your clan mates and so on but yeah. they should add like other things to the clan scene as well but especially the clan versus clan pvp i feel like that would be also good content and good commercials and everything else but i feel like all of the pvp related stuff would make for good advertisement so i'm probably a bit biased there but what do you think about the clan versus clan pvp oh. I, dude, I would love. I've I've asked for that for forever. I'd love to see that. You know what I mean? I I again, this is part of like where I think there's so much for them to grow. They've put a lot of time into PVE stuff over the years, and obviously they introduced Centranos, and you know we could debate whether that was successful or not. But like, there's so much more potential with PVP. Like, give us PVP lovers something to really get excited about, and and I think that that kind of stuff would be fun. Again, like you'd have to, the biggest thing with clan versus clan PVP is. You'd have to actually have good matchmaking. You know what I mean? You'd have to really have a solid matchmaking algorithm that does a good job of matching clans that are truly competitive with one another instead of matching a god tier clan with a clan that's way less in terms of having spent money and stuff like that. But you can do that. You can do that super easily. And that would be so much more fun. And I agree with you. That would absolutely engender a sense of community within your clan. Um, and when I look at Raid, like, one of the best parts of Raid is the community. You know what I mean? We just had the community awards talking about content creators and some of the, some of the members of the community. But if you want to foster more community, give, give people a reason to talk to one another. Give them a reason to exchange strategies. Give them a reason to battle together. And so many other games in this space do this way, way, way better than Raid does. So this absolutely makes my list for something I want to see change for sure. Yeah, by the way, why can't we direct message other people in game? I've been playing AFK Journey recently, and pretty often I just get random messages from people asking me what's up. Why can't we get that in Raid? I guess it might be like a big thing for like, maybe it will take a lot of server capacity. I don't know. I'm not expert. No, on that, but no, I, not at all. It's not hard to do. It's just like we, you have to want to do it. We, we have the global chat. I feel like direct messages would be much bigger thing. We have the clan chat as well, but both of those, I feel like they aren't that popular. But if they added, added direct messages or maybe friend lists and this kind of stuff, they could add all sorts of other interactions with them. Like, yeah. you know, maybe you give rewards to your friends or maybe there are some game modes that you can you can use your friends to help you with, maybe faction wars or whatever. But there's a lot of stuff that you can do with that. Many other games do it as well. Just copy it. I would be super happy with those mechanics. Totally, totally. Another missed opportunity. And again, a quality of life improvement that should have been implemented, in my opinion, a long time ago. Um, but that, you know, just because it hasn't been implemented doesn't mean it shouldn't. And I really hope, like, I'm in the software space. I know how all this stuff works in terms of backlog and prioritizing certain features and other features get pushed off in the future. And obviously, I'll give I'll give uh, Plarium their, their credit. I'm very excited and very encouraged by the recent... Um, you know, uh, stuff that dropped of like, here's our roadmap. Here are the things we're working on to fix, which is great. All stuff that needed to be fixed, all stuff that needed to be changed. Awesome. Good job. Well, now, you know what? Take that. Let's go further. Let's do it on PVP. Let's do it on direct messaging. Let's do it on fostering community. You know what I mean? Like they know, they know the things because people in content creator chat have mentioned them for years. People have done videos on them. I've done videos. You have Ash, Hades. Doesn't matter. Every creator has done videos talking about this stuff. So now I just want to see it happen. And I think they have a big enough team to where 
they could do it and they could do it, you know, pretty consistently. And I think it would make a major impact in terms of people's happiness and people's, you know, just excitement to play the game and, and coming back and playing more frequently. But yeah, totally agree. Anyway, I kind of blended the last two points together because the, I had the clan versus clan like PvP or the CVC and the fact that you have like friendly arena battles kind of as a, as a two different things, but they are kind of little bit in relation to each other. One other thing that I had in my notes is that there could be a lot of player-made content via different kind of tournaments that players could host. I've, I have talked about this before. You probably haven't seen it, but there is this um, this German streamer. I think he's called Hammerhead, something like that. But mm. he's, he sometimes hosts these kinds of uh, classic arena tournaments with his own rules that you get certain amount of points for using specific champions, like if you use epics or how fast you can do the battles and so on, can you get the win? But it would be super fun if we could make user-made content in Raid, like some kind of PvP tournaments, like maybe, maybe we could make our own live arena tournaments, or maybe we could just do friendly arena battles, or even clan battles. And by that, we could make our own content. But maybe that's too much. Maybe that wouldn't be super mainstream. No, but no as- it's not too much. No, don't you put that in their head. Because I have asked for this as well for mm-hmm. over a year since they introduced Live Arena. Because think about how insanely hype it would be to yeah. battle your friends and in, in to like practice your strategies without having to worry about your ranking. To do a, a create like a CVC or a content creator, I mean, uh, tournament. You know what I mean? Where it's like, all right, all the content creators, we're going to put them in different brackets and we're going to play it out and we're going to see who emerges as the quote-unquote undisputed content creator arena champion. Like, there's so much potential for this kind of stuff. And nobody can tell me that this wouldn't be insanely hype, right? Like, I, I come from a place where I only got into Raid because I did a sponsor stream. The majority of games that I play are things like Call of Duty, Smash Bros. I play a ton of competitive games like that and i love competing with my buddies and you know and getting better and improving strategically or improving in terms of my my capabilities and it's like raids the same like yeah there's the pay to play aspect of it we can't we can't ignore that i get it it's the one thing that can't be equal unless they i think ash suggested a, a while back like having a game mode and you might we can, you know talked about this earlier but like having a game mode where everybody gets the same champions, everyone has the same kind of stuff, and you see what someone can do truly from a strategy perspective. But, oh my God, dude, I would kill to have a, a content creator tournament or a friendly tournament with my clan mates or just other stuff like that. And I just like, I, it, it's probably one of the number one, it's like almost the number one thing on my list to what I want to see changed for PvP because I do think it would be massively successful and most importantly, so much fun. Like we're playing a game, right? It's supposed to be fun. Like that's fun. Mm. That to me is fun. So I'd love to see that happen. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know that Ash comes from Glass of Clans background. He used yeah. to make videos for it, or I guess he still does. And I actually made a recent video where I was kind of talking about that, like in regards to the like live arena where you use champions that are not your own. And people mentioned in comments that about the thing that you said about Ash. And there's some kind of game mode in Class of Clans that is exactly like that. So yeah, I, I yeah, guess it was his suggestion. I think it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. B- people were telling me in comments that I should uh, make a video with Ash talking about it, but I had just made another video with him. So mm. I, I, maybe that maybe that will be another time. But I'm yeah, I should ask him to do a video about that since he probably you should. No, you should. More. Ash is a great dude. Yeah, Ash is a great dude. He totally did a video with you on that. Yeah, no, no, he will. Do, he will. He he told me that we could make a video for my channel, and I, yeah, that should be the topic. But anyway, no, not talking about my uh, content creation plus. That was pretty much the list that I had for the video. Yeah. Do you, do you have some other topics that you felt yeah. like I left out that would be important? No. Now you covered almost everything, but I'm just going to reiterate: nerf polymorph, do it, Plarium, nerf polymorph. I'm begging you. All you have to do, look, keep it in the game. This is my number one issue. It always will be. People can say I'm crying or complaining. I don't care because I know it'll be better. All you have to do, please, for the love of God, don't make it two turns anymore. I'm begging you. That's too strong. Please don't make it remove 
half of a champion's health. That is absurd. That's literally better than some damage dealing abilities in the game. That's insane. And please, 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 for the love of God, don't make it make your champion 150 speed. That's all I'm asking. One turn, no half health, no 150 speed. It's still really strong, even with those things. I will never stop trying to get this horrible blessing nerfed. I know you disagree with me on this on some level, shitty, but uh, please, God, that's my number uh, one thing. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not even really going to disagree. It's a little bit about the uh, like level to it. I think Polymorph is uh, a mechanic that makes sense, but it's too strong. It totally should be nerfed. I don't disagree about uh, about that part. And I would I would go with the same concept and even take it a little bit further. That nerf Polymorph, nerf Lockout, nerf top 10 most used champions in the game by analytics. And just go with that. Like, look at the analytics. Maybe you don't listen to the players. Maybe they are always biased and so on. Just go with the analytics, and I'm sure nerfing things would make the game like way better. Like, I feel like Plarium doesn't even realize how much it bothers people that the champion balance is perfect. It's not perfect. And I understand in a game like Raid, like I said, the combat is very good, and the skills are very complex and unique, so it is very hard to balance this game. And especially because of that, you have to nerf things. You can't just buff things and introduce new, even more broken stuff to try to rebalance the other super OP, OP stuff. You just need to nerf things and the game will yes. be way better. Yes, yes. We can, this is, this is a momentous occasion, shitty. We agree 100%. We agree on Polymorph and you know what? I agree on Lockout and I agree on the champion list as well. In spite of having all of those champions and being that person who can use any of them, I would love to see the things you just said happen. So I am 1 million percent in agreement. And uh, and I'm so glad that we see eye to eye on this. There is hope. If we can agree on this shitty, then there is no reason that Plarium can't do it. And hopefully your viewers will agree, though. I can't wait to see the comments on this video because they'll probably be like, don't you ever talk about nerfing our champions. Don't you do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think... Uh I think most on most things they are probably going to agree with you. But one thing I've noticed on comments is that my viewers, at least, they don't want Armands to be nerfed. Like, my oh, viewers yeah. basically feel like it's this thing that there's other really OP champions that I would say that are on the same level as Armands. You could agree which one is a little bit better, but let's say like Galatir, for instance. Both of those kind of do similar thing and are super frustrating to play against. And obviously everybody or most people got Armands, so they would kind of feel like if we nerf Armands and not Galatir, it's basically screwing the, like, the casual players and so on, but I get it. That's why people defend Armands. I, I get it too. I get it too. And you know what? And I'll say this. I think Galathir is a very OP champion as well. I'm not going to say that he doesn't deserve a little bit of a nerf too. I still think Armands is better for a lot of different reasons, but you know what? I don't want Shinny's video to get a hundred dislikes so that's just my opinion guys so give him the likes because shinny is a champion of the of the low spender free-to-play movement don't penalize him for my cracking views don't hold my dirty you know pay to win uh antics against your boy shinny make sure to like his video and obviously subscribe to his channel oh okay <laughs> okay Th that's that's a nice uh nice way to close the video Th thanks for the Thanks for the good uh, advertisement. But yeah, I think this is where we're going to leave this video. I think it was a very good conversation. I think we mostly agree, but there was some like different perspectives. So I guess we made the topic very like uh, very specific and nuanced. I hope some people from Plarium would watch this video. Noob uh, recently talked about on his video where he, <laughs> where he visited the Plarium studios that they do actually watch surprisingly much raid videos and one of the developers i forget his name it was not armands but something similar to armands but he watches raid videos on his commute to work i hope they consider these ideas or watch some other videos where people talk about champion balance and nerfing but uh, that's it for this video if you disagree if we left something out then let us know in the comments i guess Rocky's gonna monitor and see if 
he's gonna get a lot of uh, negative feedback in regards to the armas. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thanks a lot for uh, Drog for joining this video, and it has been a very interesting conversation. But that's it. Thanks for watching, and see ya.